There are many different types of therapy. I will be giving a brief introduction on what therapy is, the most common types of therapy, and some more uncommon forms of therapy. Sigmund Freud, a neurologist from the late 1800s to the early 1900s, is the founder of psychoanalysis. He had many different theories on psychoanalysis. One of his key theories was his talk therapy theory. It's based on the idea that talking about the problem will help clarify things and put, the, put things in perspective. Freud was a very important figure, and I will be talking about him further into the um, presentation. The main types of psychotherapy are psychoanalysis and psychodynamic therapies, behavior therapy, cognitive therapy, humanistic therapies, and integrative therapy. Behavior therapy focuses on identifying actions that could benefit a person's behavior. The idea is that behaviors are learned and can be fixed if they are unhealthy. This diagram helps explain what the process is. Three people that I found interesting while researching are B.F. Skinner, Ivan Pavlov, Eric Erickson. I labeled the pictures with the corresponding numbers. B.F. Skinner was an influential figure that is best known for his studies on behaviorism. He started human behavior, or he studied human behavior in an objective and scientific way. His developments are known as the Skinner box. He learned that behaviors depended on what happens after the response. He called this operant behavior. Pavlov was a Russian physiologist. He discovered classical conditioning. He was known for his studies on dogs' digestive systems. His experiment on dogs is famous because it teaches that environmental stimulus and a natural occurring stimulus can work together to create a learning process called classical conditioning. Eric Erickson added to the Freudian theory. His beliefs and ideas are, are centered on an epigenetic sorry, principle, which proposes that all people go through a series of eight stages. And those eight stages are trust versus mis mistrust, autonomy versus shame and doubt, initiative versus guilt, industry versus inferiority, identity versus confusion, intimacy versus isolation, generativity versus stagnation, and integrity versus despair. He created the eight stages based on a physiosocial development, which is based on Freud's psychosexual theory. Some common techniques used in therapy are classical conditioning and operant conditioning. Classical conditioning, like I mentioned earlier, was discovered by Ivan Pavlov. This is currently used in therapies for problems like substance abuse. This method is effective because it uses the brain's ability to pattern match. This helps with substance abuse recovery by exposing the conditioned stimuli, which would be any sights, smells, or locations that are associated with addiction. It's possible to take those stimuli and weaken them so that the urges eventually go away. It's used to eliminate unhealthy behaviors. So in the first picture, it's a dog um, and it's being summoned by a bell. And so that dog is conditioned. Whenever it hears a bell, it will expect food. So you can condition your brain to do what you want it to do eventually. Operant conditioning is when a behavior is treated by having a consequence, whether it's positive or negative. Today, therapists use it for reinforcing a person's behavior. For example, a child who struggles with doing chores, parents can reinforce their behavior by giving them an allowance. Chores are the desired behavior, and the allowance is the reinforcer. There are many types of therapy being used. The most common types of therapy I mentioned previously in the second slide. But there are many other forms. The first unconventional therapy method is the core process psychotherapy. This method is when a mindful approach is being used. It helps emphasize awareness on a person's body. It also helps mentally process self-exploration. Through this process, a person will identify the history behind their problems. The goal is to let go and grow. Another unfamiliar type of therapy is dialectical behavior therapy, also known as DBT. This is a type of cognitive behavior therapy. The specific method of therapy was intended to treat borderline personality disorder, but now can help the recovery from several other mental health disorders. In this method, there are three basic assumptions. All things are interconnected, change is constant, and inevitable. Opposites can be integrated to form a closer approximation of truth. DBT is used in group therapy, individual therapy, and phone coaching. 
The history behind therapy is interesting. The growth and improvement over the decades in methods of therapy is impressive. I look forward to seeing how these methods will be improved on further in the future.